Hey guys, this is Rene and today I want to show you how to create a quick trading panel for your MetaTrader 5 uh, trading so you can process partial closes of your positions and break even operations quickly. So um, let's have a look at this first, like the program is here already, I wrote it already. I will show you in the, the code in a second. But first of all, this program is designed to, um, yeah, you can select a trade that you want to modify. Let's take, for example, this 0.44 buy trade in Euros dollar. And then I can add a percentage here. Let's say I want to close 30% of this position, which should be around, I don't know, should end up at 30 uh, 0.3 for example and then I click on partial close and you can see um, it's ending up at 0.31 if I do it again we will be left with 0.22 I can also close like uh, 10% um, or I can say I want to close 100% which would be the complete position of course and you can see I enter all of this here in this trading panel but the operations are done of course on a account basis so you can really work with this um, very easily and quickly. So here, let's close half of the position. So this is working just fine. Also, we can see for buy positions, for example, let's um, yeah have a look at this um, on the screen here. So you can see one of these positions is the buy position here. And right now, none of these positions have a stop loss. But if I click on break even now, you can see for this buy position here, we do get the stop loss. Um, yeah, we can also do it for the... Now, we cannot do it for the sell position because then, of course, uh, we will get an error because um, it's currently losing. So we cannot process the stop loss, but we could. Um, no, we can. Oh, yeah, we can do it for the um, USD Japanese yen position, position, I think. So if we click on break even, it will also place the stop loss at break even for this USD Japanese yen position. So you can see that's um, the program. And that's how you can work with the program. So let me show you the code now real quick. So I wrote the code already in my meta editor. Um, and this is um, the code. So first of all, we have a bunch of includes here because we are using the controls library, which is part of the MQL5 framework. You can find the complete, um, yeah, you can find all of the classes here pretty much in this controls folder. If you want to learn more about this and programming in general you can also check out my website uh, eon.bmtrading.de also linked in the description and you will find a complete course on metatrader 5 programming where you learn everything also suitable for beginners of course so yeah after including all of these files that we need so a bunch of controls for the controls in the chart and then of course the trade.mqh file because we want to um, process trading operations then I like to set up some defines for my trading panel so I can easily change the look of my trading panel. Let's say, for example, I want to make it um, not as high. So I could go to 200 instead of 250. And you see um, now, yeah, it is a little bit, uh, a little bit smaller. I could also say I want to make it wider. So I could say I want to have it look, I want it to look somehow like this. And you can see now it's, uh, more stretched so this is um, why I created these um, defines up here then I created a bunch of global variables these are actually just the controls that I have in the chart so we do have this app dialog which is the thing that can, that I can drag around here then the first thing here where I enter the percentage is a edit then I have two buttons here and one list um, uh, list view and that this is what we see here so we have the app dialog the list view the edit and the two buttons here so these are the global variables that i created and then in the on init function i added all of the code to um yeah create the um trading panel or this uh, graphical user interface in the chart so first of all we create the app which is again this uh, app dialog here uh provide a bunch of coordinates where it should be displayed in the chart and then this block is actually just for designing the app a bit like if I delete this block for example the colors would be gone um, or at least the colors of the app so you can see now everything is um, gray but if I add this block um, then yeah I just switch the color to yellow pretty much and that's what this block is doing then um, the next is I create the edit 
I create the close button and the break even button. And then, and you can see I always use these like panel width or um, panel height, these um, defines that are set here. So everything is always working out even if I change the panel width or the, or the panel height. And then also I create the list. Uh, then afterwards, after creating all of these controls, I add them to the app. This is important um, to make them draggable. So, whoops, Allah, this also took the stop loss. Um, but yeah, you can see uh, I can drag the panel and uh, or the app and everything follows. This is because I added it to the app. That's an important step for this. Then, um, yeah, I run the app and I redraw the list. The redraw list is a, another function, which I will explain in a second. But first of all, if we um, yeah, deinitialize the program, I just call app.destroy. And this will pretty much just destroy the, the app and remove it from the chart. Um, so let's now have a look at the redraw list function. The redraw list function is very easy, uh, straightforward function. So first of all, we delete all of the content from the list view. Then we loop through all of our positions. We select every single position. And then we pretty much just check the properties of this selected position. And then we just add another item to the list, which contains the ticket, the symbol, the type, and the volume of the currently selected position. And then we redraw the chart. So the redraw list function is really just adding the content to the list. So let's go back here. This was uh, the, the, the last part of the onInit function. Then we do also have the onInit. We talked about this. Then we do have the onChartEvent function. And the onChartEvent function, which is the one that captures all of the chart events. First of all, we have to say, uh, or we would have to pass the uh, chart event to the app. This is done by app.chartEvent provide all of these parameters. This is important because otherwise we would not be able to drag around the uh, app like this. Uh, so do not forget this. And then also next up we check for button clicks. So we first of all check if the event that triggered the onChart event function was a object click. If yes, we check if the S parameter, which uh, actually usually holds the name of the object that was clicked. If it is either the name of our button close or the name of our button break even. If it was one of our buttons, we print a quick print statement or information in the in the expert journal. And then we just loop through all of our tickets because we have to find the ticket that or the position that is currently highlighted here in the list view. Because if we click one, it's highlighted. And here you can see we loop through all of the positions. We select every single position. And then we use the string find function to, f uh, to check if in the cur currently selected list view item, if we can find the position ticket. Because as you can see, the position ticket is always part of the list item. So this is how we can find a position. And if we find um, the position, then we first of all create a, a um, trade object here because we will need it to modify the positions afterwards. And then we check again if it was the button close that was clicked or the button break even. If the button close was clicked, we get the percentage that is added um, or that is uh, as an input in the edit uh, field right now. And then we um, check if there was a valid input <laughs> because otherwise we cannot close something. Also, if the input is zero, we would um, uh, cause problems because um, we we divide here. Wait, no, actually it was not, would not cause a problem because we do not divide by zero. We just divide zero by something. Okay, never mind. So then we calculate the lots that we actually have to close. So we take the position volume of the currently selected position, multiply it with a percentage from the edit and divide it by 100. Then we round the lots to close and then we use the position close partial function, which is part of the C trade class. Yeah, we just provide the position ticket and the lots to close and then we unclick our button close. So it is so it is looking unclicked again. <laughs> and um, if we, um, if the uh, on, uh, on, on, on chart event function um, was triggered because of the button break even, then it's even easier because here we just use the trade object immediately and say position modify and we modify the currently selected position and set the stop loss to the position open price. And then we unclick the bu button break even. That's pretty much it. That's how we 
deal with all the uh, chart events. And the last function that is left is the on trade transaction function. And this one is really, really easy. We just check if a new deal was added to the history, which means that a position was opened or closed or partially closed. And then we just redraw the list with a redraw list function that I explained before. So that's the whole program. You can copy the code from here. I will also upload the code in the into the school community, of course, so you can download it um, with one click and then play around with it. What would be a really cool um, uh, task for you or a practice, uh, practice um, if you just learn MQL5, you could modify this, like for example, the the look, you could uh, change the colors, you could add more buttons, just more functionality or maybe more information to the list view here. There are multiple things that you can do. You can also write a very big trading panel that can help you to also open positions, for example. So yeah, just feel free to play around with this. And I hope you like this little introduction in how to create a partial close and break even training panel. <laughs> That's it. Thanks for watching and have a great time and have fun playing around with this. Bye-bye.